we are on Ed Puzzle number two, Significant Figures. This will be extremely important when we're looking at sig figs, and this is another topic that will be discussed and used through the entirety of chemistry all the way until the spring. Before we can get into what sig figs are exactly, we need to talk about measurements that are made in the lab. Measurements that are made in the lab are always what you see plus one more. We have estimated digits or uncertainty included in these numbers because of human error or just even I might see it differently than how my partner sees. So what you always want to do when reading a device in the lab is figure out what the device ends at. So in this case, looking at the graduated cylinder at our side, we are ending in the ones position, but then you always wanna estimate one additional number further than that last one. So for example, looking at the graduated cylinder that's on the side, I see where the meniscus is, cause that's where I'll make my measurement. And in this case, I am at 20 to 30. So I have 21, two, three, four. So I can, roughly for myself estimate 24 but i do need to give that one additional number in this case i could say 24.0 24.1 or even 23.9 all of those would be considered correct answers um so looking at that measurement device i could say to the tenths place so practicing this idea of what I see plus one more, if I'm looking at this line segment, I can see that my ruler is separated into 0.5 segments. So I know that in this case, I can estimate kind of around there. It is a little bit harder because, so what I see in this case is I can see the line passes three. So I know I'm in that one's position of three. And because I can't really tell right where it is in between 3 and 3.5, I'm going to estimate 3.2. So then looking at how much liquid is in the container on the beaker, because I can see the tens position, but I can't see past that, I'm going to estimate to the ones. So in this case, I can say 48. I could say 49, I could say 47, all those would be correct, but I can only estimate to that one's position. Now, when we talk about significant figures, because we have this uncertainty and this estimate um, estimation that's at play, I need to know how to know which numbers are significant. So when I'm making a calculation and I need to simplify to the fewest amount of decimals, I wanna try and get rid of as, as much uncertainty as possible. So to do this, if I am doing my numbers and there is no decimal present in the number, to figure out how many significant figures are in this number, I will count from the first non-zero number to the last non-zero number. Now, if there is a decimal point that is present anywhere in the number, I'm going to count from the first non-zero number to the very end of that decimal. And if I'm dealing with scientific notation, all numbers in my coefficient are considered significant. So in this case, I would have two sig figs because both the three and the four. Now, looking at the first two, it is a little bit hard to determine where do I start? How do I know? So there is a method that we use when we're counting sig figs. The method that we use is called the Pacific Atlantic method of counting our significant figures. As you know, when you're looking at the United States on a globe, on the left side, you have the Pacific Ocean, whereas on the right side, you have the Atlantic Ocean. The Pacific side represents if a decimal is present. So if a decimal is present, so for example, if I had 0.03, I would start counting from the Pacific side by canceling all zeros until I hit my first non-zero number. So I would start and say, okay, well, that's a zero. I'll cancel, I'll cancel. Oop, there's a three. So I will stop and I will count that as one significant figure. For example, again, if I had something like 0 0.150, because that decimal is present, I'm going to cancel all zeros until I hit a non-zero. So coming here, I have oh, a zero, but I hit a one. So I'll count my one, two, three to have three total sig figs. Any zero that is after your non-zero number when you're doing this method will be counted. The only time you will not is if you're doing that initial canceling of zeros. Now, on the other side, if the decimal is absent, I'm on that Atlantic side. So instead of coming from the left, I will cancel all zeros to the right. So for example, if I had 1,000, I'm going to start 
by canceling all zeros until I hit that one. And in this case, I have my one sig fig. The same kind of idea will follow. So if I had one, two, zero, three, zero, zero, I will still identify if I have a decimal. In this case, it's absent. I'll come from the right. I'll cancel all zeros. And any zero that is after that non-zero number, that first non-zero number is still considered significant. So that's how you figure out how many sig figs. Now, when you're doing a calculation, you do need to determine based on what function you are doing, how many sig figs you need for that answer. If you're doing an addition subtraction one, you'll do the math like you usually would. But instead, for your final answer, you will need to round that answer to the fewest number of decimal places. So in this case, if I was adding 1.0 and 2.00, because 1.0 has the fewest decimals, I need to make sure I'm rounding at that point. If I'm doing multiplication or division, you still do the math like you usually would. But instead, you are going to look at those base numbers and figure out which one has the fewest sig figs. So you will use that to determine how many sig figs your final answer will have. We are gonna do the top two together. So we will do this one and this one, and then you will answer these on your own and then answer them on the up puzzle. So just like before, you always wanna pay attention to your function. In this case, I'm doing addition for my first one. So I will do the math like I usually would. So I'll do 23.78, plus 4.567. In this case, that gives me an answer of 28.347. But I need to take my answer and based on the fact it's addition, simplify that to the fewest decimal places. So I'm going to look above and I'm gonna say, okay, 23.78 has two decimal places, okay? And then 4.567 is dealing with three decimal places. In this case, two is the smallest. So I'll take my answer and round that to two decimals. So I get 28.3. And because that seven is greater than five, I'm going to bump my four up. So I'll do 28.35 as my final answer. Now moving to the next one, I'm looking at multiplication. So I'll do the math. I'll do my 3,503 times 140 to give me an answer of 490,420. Because I am multiplying, I'm going to follow the rule for multiplication that states I need to simplify my answer to the fewest amount of sig figs. So I'm going to look at them and determine if the decimal is present or absent, and then from there, how many sig figs remain. So looking at 3,503, because the decimal is absent, I'm going to come from the right. I cancel all my zeros, and in this case, I have none, to give me four sig figs. Looking at 140, that one also has a decimal that is absent, so I will come from the right. I'll cancel all zeros until I hit my first non-zero to give me two sig figs. So this means that I must simplify my answer to two sig figs. Now I can cancel zeros out. So to have two sig figs, we know we need to have at least the four and the nine, but then every number after that will be replaced with zeros. So that gives me a final answer of 490,000. I would like you to try the next two on your own, uh, answer the questions on the Ed Puzzle, and then we will go over them when you are done. All right, so looking at the first one, I'm dealing with a subtraction. So just like before, I'll do the math. So I'll do 789.2 minus 29.805. I get a final answer of 759.3. Because it is subtraction, I'm going to look for the fewest amount of decimal places. So looking at the first one, I have one decimal place, whereas the second one, I have three decimal places. Because one is the smallest, I'm going to take my answer, 759, and simplify it to the one decimal place. 
because the nine is bigger than five, I can bump my three up to four to give me a final answer of 759.4. Looking at the next one, I'm dealing with another multiplication. So I'll do the math. I'll take 56.89 times 34.5, write down my answer of 1,962.705. 1, because I am multiplying, I need to do the fewest amount of sig figs. So I will identify if the decimal is present or absent to count my sig figs. Because the decimal is present, I'm going to come from the left and cancel any zero that's there. There are no zeros in this case, so I get four sig figs. 34.5, I'm going to identify because the decimal is present. I need to come from the left. I'm going to cancel all zeros. In this case, I have none. Count my sig figs and have three. Three is the fewest amount of sig figs, so I will simplify my answer to this. Now, the decimal is present in this answer, so what I will instead do is I will remove that decimal. I'll do one, nine, six, zero, and that will be my final answer because I'm following my three sig fig rule, but I am making sure that I am included all the way to at least before the decimal was canceled. That concludes this ad puzzle over significant figures. I would like you to complete the sig fig practice worksheet. Again, this is a topic that is going to be discussed and used through the entirety of chemistry, so making sure you understand it is extremely important. You may watch this Ed Puzzle. You have three attempts on it to get the 100%. However, if you do have any further questions, make sure you find that time to see me after school.